Hey guys, it's Kerry, and in this video, I think we're going to wrap up the functionality of the game by adding in some bad guys. In the next video, we'll be adding in some different graphics. So, let's get started. Uh, currently, we've got a player that can be controlled with the keys. We can pick up food items to increase our score. I think it's time to uh, add some challenges for the player. So, I'm going to go down here, and below my food section... I'm going to call this the bad guy section. Let me just uh, see how I wrote that yesterday. Bad guy stuff. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm thinking about the bad guy, and the player has an X and Y position as well as an X and Y speed. The food has just an X and Y position. So what I'm thinking is my bad guys will have a similar structure to the player, They're going to have an X and Y position, and then an X speed and a Y speed. Now, because we did all of that work with the food, I think we can base the bad guys very similarly to the food. So we had a list that was an empty list, uh, and it was going to contain all of the food that we made. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bad guy list that will contain all of the bad guys. So I'm going to copy this, but I'm going to change the name of it to bad guys. Next up, the same way that we had a create food list, or a create food function, I am going to take this function for creating food, and I am going to change it to create bad guy. Now when I create a bad guy, let's see, I do want the x and y coordinates, sorry, the x coordinate to be from 0 to 800, I want the y coordinate to be from 0 to 600, I also need to make a speed, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an x speed, and that x speed could be anywhere from going backwards to going forwards in the x direction, so I'm going to generate a random number from, let's say, negative 3 to 3. And I'm going to do the same thing for the y speed, so I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to put let y speed equal generate a random number from negative 3 to 3. Alright, uh, and then I'm going to change this to let my new bad guy be equal to whatever x and y coordinates I randomly generate, comma, whatever x speed I randomly generate, comma, whatever y speed I randomly generate. And then I'm going to append not to the foods list, I'm going to append to the bad guys list my new bad guy. Okay, that seems pretty good. Now I'm going to create a couple of bad guys. So I'm thinking that the game, if I, oh sorry, I didn't mean to change the name of that. I'm thinking that in order to have, uh, I guess in order for the game to be a little bit challenging at first, but not too bad, I'm going to start off by creating one, two bad guys. Now what's tricky about the create bad guys function is that when I refresh my screen, we won't see anything different. Let's see if I got any error messages in the console. It takes forever for it to load the console when I'm recording these videos. Um, no, no error messages. Uh, I want to check to see if the bad guys list exists, so I'm going to type in bad guys. And here we go, bad guys. Um, yes, it does come up. I can see that it correctly generated two different bad guys with X and Y coordinates as well as X speeds and Y speeds. That's looking pretty good. Um, so, let me close that down. And let's see, what's the next thing? I need to be able to draw the bad guys. So, I'm going to have a function very similar to draw food, but I'm going to call it draw bad guys. Or draw bad guy. And it's going to take in some bad guy info, which will be one of those lists that has like an x, y, x speed, y speed. And I'm going to draw a circle at whatever the x coordinate is, which is the zeroth coordinate from the bad guy, this one right here. And I'm going to draw at the y coordinate, whatever the bad guy info number one, index one is, so zero, one. 
I can make the radius of the bad guys a little bit smaller, maybe 20, and I can make them uh, like cannonballs so that they're black. Next up, I need to apply this function to all of the bad guys. So I'm going to take my tool up here that I had for draw all foods, and I'm just going to change it so that everywhere where I see food stuff, I make it bad guy stuff. So function, draw all bad guys. Oop. It's going to read in, not the foods list, it's going to read in the bad guys list, so it gets information. It's going to take in this list that stores all of the bad guys. Uh, I'm going to say go through that list that stores all of the bad guys, and for each bad guy, draw a bad guy, bad guy. This is a little bit repetitive, but um, that seems good. And then what I need to have is I need to have it so that Inside of my set interval, um, I'm updating the player, drawing the player, update all foods, draw all foods. I'm going to update all the bad guys, and then I'm going to draw all the bad guys. But I don't have the update all bad guys function yet. So draw all bad guys requires me to plug in that whole bad guys list. All right, let's see if that works. All right, nice. So I've got my bad guys on the screen, and uh, every time I refresh it, yep, it's true that they are in random locations. All right, but they're not moving yet, and the player doesn't die when I touch them. So that last bit is going to be incorporated into the update all foods function. Sorry, update all bad guys function. So I'm going to copy my, do I want to copy my update all food? I don't know if I do, actually. I think this one I want to program from scratch. So I'm going to write a function, which is update all bad guys. And I'm going to go and plug in the bad guys as my input. So what I'm thinking is I need each of the bad guys to move in this direction based on their velocity or their speed, and then this direction based on their speed. Uh, and I'm also going to want the bad guys to be able to walk through the walls just like the player. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, take the bad guys list, and for each, and um, what it's going to do is for each bad guy, right, when we write these loops, it's like, take the plural version, and then for each singular thing within that list, what I want to do is I want that bad guy's x coordinate, the zeroth value, to be equal to that bad guy's x coordinate plus whatever the speed was and the speed in the x direction is not the is uh let's see zero one two and this is really similar to the math that we used for the player where i'll show you where the player's x coordinate was equal to the x coordinate plus the x speed the y coordinate is going to be equal to the y coordinate plus the y speed in fact i'm just going to grab this and i'm going to copy that down here So that was the x coordinate. This is going to be the y coordinate. I'm going to change all of these to bad guy. Cool. I do want my bad guys to be able to walk through the walls. So the same way that my player was able to walk through the walls, I'll grab that. So that was the player controls. Here's the edge conditions that allow us to walk through the edges. So I'll copy these edge conditions. Oh, okay, so I'm just going to realign that by highlighting it and shifting it over. All right, cool. So uh, if the bad guy's x coordinate is past 800, I want the bad guy to reappear on the other side. So I'm going to change all of these to bad guy. And then I'm going to check to see if my bad guys start to move, because it looks like this is what it means to move. Take the x coordinate uh, and, add, and add the x speed to it. Take the y coordinate and add the y speed to it, and then make that the new y coordinate. All right, so here we go. Uh, before I draw all the bad guys, I would like to update all bad guys. And I have to read in the bad guys list.
All right, let's see. Okay, my bad guys are moving. Um, cool, but there's one more part with the bad guys, which is if I collide with them, I need to lose the game. So for this part, what I'm thinking is it's going to be really similar to the food. Um, I'm going to go to my update bad guys function. So for each bad guy, I'm going to check to see, I'm going to move that bad guy. I'm going to teleport that bad guy through the edge if necessary. And then I'm going to check to see if I die. Do I die? And the way that I'm going to check that is I'm going to say let distance equal. And when we were writing our food function, we wrote a get distance function. I don't know where I put that. Let's see. Generate random, draw rectangle. Okay. Okay, cool. I'm going to use this get distance function. So I'm going to say, let distance equal, get the distance between the bad guy that we're currently up to and the player info. And the player info is just the player, basically. It's the list that stores the x, y, x speed, y speed information from the player. Because I'm using the player info now, I think I have to take the player info as another parameter in my update bad guys list. And I'm going to have to add the player info here as a like a input for the list as well. Or sorry, for the function as well. All right, so I'm going to say let distance equal, get the distance between the bad guy and the player. If that distance is less than, I don't know, let's see. Um, my bad guys have a radius of 20, and my player has a radius of about 60. So that's 80 if it's exact, but I'm going to give a little bit of flexibility here. I think I'm going to say 70. I just want to see what I put for the uh, food. I said 60 for the food. I think it shouldn't be anything more than 60. So I think I'm going to say 50. I'm going to see how that looks. If our distance is less than 50, then what I'd like to do is I'm just going to start off by stopping the game from playing. Uh, so to stop the game from playing, the game is basically this loop that repeatedly draws the background, updates the player, updates the food, updates the bad guys, and draws all those things on the screen. To stop this loop from running, I have to give this loop a, game, a name. So I'm going to call it game loop. I'm going to say game loop equals set interval that. And then what I'm going to say here is if distance is less than 50, clear interval game loop. And what that should do is, if my distance between the bad guy and the player is less than 50, it will stop this loop from running, which will effectively end the game. Let's see if that works. All right, cool. Well, it looks like I'm getting a game over, which is pretty nice. Let me just see how that looks after I get a couple of these. All right, that's definitely a game over, which is great. Um, I think I have a couple of more things to do, which is I noticed that as I'm collecting the food, my game is not getting any more difficult. So uh, the game is going to stay pretty easy the whole time. So what I'm thinking is every time I get the food, not only could it make a new food item, it could make a new bad guy, and that would make the game pretty challenging. I just want to look to see uh, what that collision looks like with the player. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my update all foods function up here, update all food, and I'm going to say that when our distance is less than 60, when we eat the food, not only should we remove that food from our food list, update our score, and create a new food, we should also create bad guy. So what this should do is it should add a new bad guy to my list. And then because all my bad guy functions were based on the entire bad guys list, and they do it for all the bad guys with the for each loop, no matter how many bad guys I have, the same functionality should be applied to all of them. Let's see if that works. So now I'm going to try to eat some food. And hopefully, yes, I got three. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, okay. So that one actually kind of reminded me that there's something kind of annoying that can happen with the bad guys. The bad guys can appear directly on top of the player. 
And that doesn't make a very fun playing experience because it kind of feels like, oh man, that was like, I, there's nothing I could do to control that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our create all bad guys list, or sorry, create bad guys function a little bit more uh, thoughtful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that when I'm making a bad guy, I don't want the bad guys to appear directly on top of the player. So but that, the way that I'm going to do this basically is I'm going to try to generate some x and y coordinates for the bad guy. But if those x and y coordinates are too close to my player, then I want to generate new x and y coordinates. And I want to keep creating x and y coordinates until my bad guy is sufficiently far from the player. That sounds like a loop to me since I'm repeatedly doing the same thing, generating a new position for the bad guy until it's sufficiently far away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say let distance equal get the distance between the bad guy. Oh, no, sorry. Ah, okay, cool. I'm going to need to actually move this part up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say let the distance equal get the distance between the new bad guy, which is going to be this list of items here, and our player info. Now I can see that my create bad guys list is dependent on knowing the player info. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this create bad guys function and I'm going to add the player info as an input variable which means that here when I create a bad guy inside of the food thing, I'll have to add the player info as an input variable. And then later down here, when I make a couple of bad guys, I have to add the player info as an input variable. So everywhere where I run the create bad guy function, I now have to plug in the player info. Okay, so I'm gonna say let distance equal, get the distance between those two things. And I want to check to see if the distance is too close, but I don't want to just do it once, because what could happen is I might generate new coordinates and it might still be too close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, that distance is less than, I would like, like a little bit of space. My player radius might be like 60, so I'm going to make sure that the bad guys are like at least an extra radius away. So well, the distance between the two is less than 120, I want to make this x coordinate so new bad guy, position zero, equal to, generate a random number from zero to 800. I don't want the old one. I want a new random number from zero to 800 that's further away from my player. And I want to make kind of a very similar line here. I'm just going to copy and paste this one. I want my new bad guy's y coordinate to be a random number between zero and 600. And then what I need to do is, since my well loop is based on the distance between my player and the bad guy, every time I generate these new coordinates, I need to update the distance calculation. And then it's going to go back to the top and it's going to check to see, is the new distance less than 120? Okay, make, make new x and y coordinates again. Oh, did I copy and paste that? I meant to delete this one. Sorry, we have the new bad guy line up here. All right, let's see how that looks. So now I should be, oh, uh-oh. Maybe I'm trapped in an infinite loop, hopefully not. Uh, new bad guy has already been declared. I think I was just based on the line of code that I just deleted. Let's see if that fixes things. Yeah, okay, cool. Awesome. So when I get the food, I shouldn't have any bad guys appear on top of me. They should be pretty far away. This one I won't be able to really fully test until I play the game for a while. Um, let's see, there is one more thing that can go wrong with the bad guys and I wanna see if it happens. Oop, I'm gonna die first. <laughs> I'm not so good at the game. Okay. Um, okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, well, uh, I can kind of just spoil what the last thing is that can go wrong with the bad guys. Um, it's possible that when I'm generating their speeds, they might generate with a speed of zero in both directions. 
and then they'll just sit still on the screen. And that doesn't make for the playing experience that I want. I want all of the bad guys to move. I've been pretty lucky that none of them are oops, staying stationary on the screen. So what I'm gonna do there is I am actually gonna do something really similar to what I just did to fix the problem that I couldn't get to have happen on the screen. Let me see if I can just refresh it a few times and see if that happens. All right, okay. Uh, it really doesn't want to have it happen on the video. But the thing that can go wrong, basically, is the bad guy can end up stationary on the screen. Oh, there it was. I just refreshed it past it. The bad guy was stationary on the screen. And the reason why is its X speed and Y speed were both zero. So what I want to do is I want to do something similar to what we did before, which is I want to say that while my X speed is equal to zero, and my y speed is equal to zero. If both of those things are true, I don't, I don't want to keep those speeds. I want my x speed and y speed to become at least one of them a number so that moves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that new bad guy position 0, 1, 2, the x speed, should be equal to a random value, uh, just basically this. And up here, sorry, down below, um, also the Y speed should do the same thing. So I'm just going to generate new speeds for my X and 0, 1, 2, 3, my Y speed until, um, until I get speeds that are not both 0. And I think that will be an improvement as well. All right. I'm thinking one last thing I could do is when I get the game over, I think I can make it look a little bit better. So let's see if I can do that here. So what I want to say is I want to say if my distance is less than 50, get rid of the loop. Then what I can do is I can draw a rectangle. So when I lose the game, if my distance between the player and the bad guy is less than 50, stop the game from running. And then I'm going to draw a rectangle that covers the entire screen. And I'm going to make that rectangle go from 0, 0, the top left corner, with width 800 and height 600, and the color um, black. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it write on the screen some text. And when I write on the screen with some text, let's see going to be similar to when I showed the score. So I'm going to say, I'm going to copy this thing here from show score. And put that here. So this time now that my screen is black, I don't want to write with a black fill. I want to write with a light green fill. I'm going to write in a bigger font here, so maybe 60 pixels. And I'm going to let my text say game over. And I want that text to appear in the middle of the screen, so I'm thinking that the x-coordinate of that text should be 400, half of 800, and the y-coordinate should be 300, half of 600. All right, let's see how that looks. Okay, cool, I got a game over, which is nice. Um, but it put the top left corner at that middle position, so I wanna move it over so that it, it like puts the center of this at the center of the screen. So I looked this up earlier, and uh, it looks like what I have to do is I have to add this line of code, that the text should be aligned to the center. So I'm going to put that below this. So the color is light green, text line center, and then the font is that. Let's see how that looks. Cool. Uh, that does a good game over there. That looks pretty good. Um, I'm thinking that maybe black wasn't the best choice for this because my score doesn't really show up. Uh, so maybe what I'll do is I'll just change... I'll change the score thing to be, instead of black, I'll change that to be light green. Let's see if that takes care of that problem. So now when I die... Oh, well, I can't make it light green because the background's light green. Shoot! Um, I'm going to make the score gray. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so I've got a gray score, and then 
Oh, okay, cool. When I draw the score, it puts it off to the side. <laughs> so uh, it looks like that's oh, a little bit annoying. I'll have to take this text align function and let me put that inside of my so show score function so that when I show the score, the text is aligned to the left, hopefully. Okay, cool. That fixes that. Uh, and then now that I've got my game over, the last thing is I'd like to also give them some text that tells them how to play the game again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, here's my game over screen. I'm just going to write game over screen. And let's see. Okay, that's all good. Light green, center, 60 pixels. Maybe this part will have a different font, a little bit smaller. I'll make this 50 pixels. The text is gonna say, I'm not gonna create a new text variable here. Maybe I will, I'll call it text two. This is gonna say, press space bar, press space to replay. And then I'm going to put that text on the screen. I want to put that text a little bit lower, so I'm going to put it below. So for, I'm going to keep it in the center in the x direction, but I'm going to put it instead of at 300, I'm going to put it at like 350 or something, maybe 400, maybe 400 in the y direction. Let's see how that looks. Okay, cool. That's looking pretty decent. Uh, and then Instead of putting game over twice, I want to put that text. I'm going to make this a little bit lower, though, so that's a little bit higher up. Game over, press space to replay. You'll notice that sometimes it draws the bad guys on top of some of the text. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, we could fix that, too. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I just have to make it so that when they press space, it actually replays. I'm pressing space, and it's not replaying. So the easiest way to make it replay when I press space is I'm going to take the window, which is the entire screen, and I'm going to add an event listener so that when we have a key down event, we run a function. And it's going to be important to know what button is pressed. So I'm going to pass in the event object. And this is very similar to when we made the arrow keys that control the player. I'm going to say if the event.key is equal to space, I think it's space uppercase. Then what I want to do is I just want to reload this screen. So I looked this up before making the video, and it looks like to reload the screen, what I have to do is I have to take this function here, window.location.reload. So let's see if that works. All right, here we go. I'm playing the game. Oh, it lagged out. Uh-oh. I wonder why it just got stuck there. Um, that was when I got the food. I thought everything was going okay with the game. Um, okay, so I'm gonna exit the page. Um, let me just bring up the game again. Okay, so I feel like what could be giving me trouble here is this stuff here. Oh, I see what it is. I said when x speed is equal to zero and when y speed is equal to zero, and then I never changed my x speed and y speed values. So anytime that I'm making a bad guy that has an x speed and y speed that are zero, it's never changing. So instead of coding this as x speed, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say when new bad guy two, which is the x speed, is equal to zero, or new bad guy three, which is the y speed is equal to zero, then I wanna run that. Uh, and the difference there is I use the x speed and y speed to create these positions. And then later when I modified these positions, I wasn't checking the new values, I was still checking the original ones against zero and zero. So it was just trapped forever generating a new bad guy position. Or new bad guy speeds. All right, so I think now it will work.
Okay, cool. So, uh, all right, sweet. Okay, great, so this is working. And then when I get a game over, I press space to replay and that doesn't work. Okay, so what I need to do is uh, I need to figure out how space is encoded. Uh, so I think maybe it's lowercase space. Or maybe it's, I think it's literally just the space symbol. That's what it is. So when uh, the event dot key is space like that, I think that does it. Let's see if this works. All right, so I need to die. Yes, cool. So now it actually refreshes the page and replays. All right, cool. So I think we solved all the problems. We'd have to play it a little longer to test it. Um, sorry for the error. I hope nobody else got trapped in infinite loops. Uh, ooh, cool, nice. Um, yeah, the game is pretty fun to play, and I think we can enjoy playing it now. All right, guys, bye.